السلام علیکم چاس ویلکم بیک ٹو دا ای لیکچر نمبر سکس آف یور پاکستان اسٹڈیز دا ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈے از الیکشن نائنٹین سیونٹی دا سپریشن آف ایسٹ پاکستان اینڈ ایمرجنس آف بنگلہ دیش اینڈ واٹ ویر دا کوزز آف دی سپریشن آف بنگلہ دیش دیٹ از دی ایسٹ پاکستان سو لیٹس ہیو اے کوئک ریکیپ آف واٹ ویو لرن سو فار So up till now we have learned that immediately after partition we suffered the two great losses of our leaders that were the Qaid Azam and Liaquat Ali Khan. Qaid Azam was the first governor general and Liaquat Ali Khan was the first prime minister of Pakistan and the Qaid Azam died uh, he died on uh, 11 September 1948 he was suffering uh, from poor health uh, whereas Liaquat Ali Khan he was assassinated on October 16 1951 that is just after 4 years of the creation of pakistan so pakistan was devoid of uh, leadership of uh, such great leaders uh, but before the death of uh, sorry the murder of liaquat ali khan uh, he actually adopted a resolution that is known as the objectives resolution and he adopted that resolution on march 12 1949 and you know that's the objective resolution that is permeable for all the coming uh, resolutions of pakistan so after these losses pakistan was still struggling with the uh, framing of the constitution and after 9 years of efforts pakistan was successful in framing a constitution finally and the constituent assembly adopted on it on 29 february 1956 and it was enforced on 23rd march 1956 So that was our first constitution the constitution of 1956 it was implemented for 2 years and 7 months only and the reason for its short living was that there were differences and quarrels between the politicians uh, there was no uh, stable leadership and there was unfair interruption of army and bureaucracy in democratic situations So on 7th October 1958 President Iskandar Mirza staged a coup d'etat. He abrogated the constitution, imposed martial law and appointed General Muhammad Ayub Khan as the Chief Martial Law Administrator and Aziz Ahmed as the Secretary General and Deputy Chief Martial Law Administrator. However, three weeks later, General Ayub, who had been openly questioning the authority of the government prior to the imposition of martial law, he disposed Iskandar Mirza on 27th October 1958 and assumed the presidency, uh, which practically formalized the materialization of the political system in Pakistan. He abrogated the constitution and dissolved all the assemblies, that is, the national assembly as well as the provincial assemblies, and he took over the charge of the offices of president and chief martial law administrator. Then we've also learned about the 1965 Indo-Pak War which the India committed an open aggression against Pakistan to materialize its expansionist intentions and attack Pakistan on the night of 6 September. The Pakistanis they repelled this attack very well and eventually the international community was forced to uh, apply a ceasefire between the two countries and they signed an agreement in Tashkent which is known as Tashkent Agreement whereby both returned to the pre-1965 territorial positions. In this war Pakistan uh, suffered great losses casualties uh, there were human casualties and of course the economic uh, prosperity that was also disturbed because of this war uh, before the 1965 war we had a con- uh, the second constitution the constitution of 1962 uh, which was the fundamental law of Islamic Republic of Pakistan and it was imposed on June 1962 until again martial law was declared in March 1969 It was abrogated in the same year by President Yahya Khan. So another military regime toppled over our constitution. On assuming the presidency, General Yahya Khan acceded to popular demands by abolishing the one unit system in West Pakistan and ordered general elections on the principle of one man, one vote. This resulted in destruction of national unity, chiefly by politicians and eventual that was the reason that was the basic reason was the separation of East Pakistan. Okay now so coming back to the topic of separation of East Pakistan uh, the most crucial important event was the elections of 1970 Pakistan was being ruled by General Yahya Khan at that time uh, he had imposed a martial law in the country so both East and West Pakistan were under the martial law and then he declared the elections of 1970 
the elections were won by the regional parties that is the pakistan people's party of mr uh, bhutto emerged as the largest party in punjab and sindh and whereas in balochistan and the nwfp the qayyum league uh, or the national awami party and jamiat e ulama e islam that they achieved the success there but all these parties were confined only to west pakistan and they had no popularity in the east pakistan the awami league of sheikh mujib won a resounding victory in east pakistan but it was non existent in west pakistan even before the elections molana modudi he warned that if regional parties emerged as winners even the military would not be able to hold the country together and that is what exactly happened in that in the scenario so pakistan people's party they won 88 uh, seats out of 144 seats and they also won 5 seats of women and whereas the awami league uh, in east pakistan they won 167 seats uh, out of 169 and they also won 7 seats of women only nurul amin and tridev roy were the only two non awami league candidates who won the election from the east pakistan so obviously the conflict of power created a new situation in the country that who is going to rule over the country because uh, uh, in west pakistan the ppp was uh, in majority and while the awami league they were in majority in east pakistan so you can see uh, the difference between even the thinking of the people that uh, these were the regional parties who could not secure any position in other uh, provinces like the west pakistan like ppp could not secure any position in the east pakistan or the awami league cannot secure any position in the west pakistan so they were both uh, the parties they were both the uh, true uh, faces of their own people uh, west pakistan supported ppp and the awami league was being supported by the east pakistanis and of course everybody wanted the uh, the seat that is the presidency uh, awami league also wanted that the pa- uh, pakistan people's party also wanted that and even general yahya khan he was also adamant on uh, taking the position of the presidency and he was not even leaving the uh, presidency presidential seat So now what happened? Uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman he uh, mounted pressure to establish his government while Pakistan's People's Party opposed it strongly. So General Muhammad Yahya Khan's wish to cling to the government further worsened the situation. So in the meantime, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman he launched the non-cooperation movement in the state affairs. Blood shedding, non-cooperation, refusal to pay taxes, demonstration of strikes, boycott of courts, and not going of officials to their respective job places became the daily routine. So Yahya Khan and his military commanders present in Dhaka took the final decision endorsed of course by Bhutto for launching a military action the insurgency erupted that drew support from several quarters and do you know on 23rd March 1971 the Awami League marked a republic day by slaughtering the West Pakistanis and Bihari Muslims at a number of places they were burnt alive and even women and children were not spared uh, and on that day when the Bangladeshi flag was hoisted instead of Pakistani flag a uh, plan was prepared to declare the independence of bangladesh on the night between march 24th and march 25th and at that time the yahya khan nominated tikka khan uh, general tikka khan as the governor of east pakistan but his administration was totally unaware of the true situation prevailing in the province so the appointment further worsened the situation the civil war was at, uh, civil war uh, reached at its peak and india was fully supporting awami league and sending its miscreants to east pakistan who combined with the workers of mukti bahini killed pakistani soldiers and ordinary citizens okay mukti bahini is uh, basically a bengali word that, that means freedom fighters So thousands of citizens of East Pakistan migrated towards the India and the Indian government pretended to support these migrants and since there was a distance of 1000 of miles that is 1600 kilometers between the eastern and western wings of the country and the hostile India was separating the two wings so Pakistan was in no position to fight an all out war with India geographically East Pakistan was surrounded by India and the sea The Pakistani defense plan- planners had believed in its indefensibility and formulated a defense policy which stipulated that it could be defended from West Pakistan. This policy contributed to a virtual exclusion of the Bengalis from the armed forces. So there was no uh, representation of Bengalis and the armed forces. So when India invaded Pakistani troops were without air protection and despite demonstrating courage they had to surrender.
So finally, on 15th December 1971, India recognized Bangladesh and in retaliation, Pakistan cut off diplomatic relations between the two countries. Okay, so let's have a look at what were the basic causes of the separation of East Pakistan and why Pakistan was cut into two pieces. So the first reason we find out is that the, it was the, because of the Ayub Khan's dictatorial era. Ayub had a prolonged military rule over Pakistan and the Bengalis could never reconcile themselves to an army control system because of their negligent share in the armed forces. They were not fully represented in the army. So the era of Ayub Khan curbed the freedom of expression. Bengalis' opposition to martial law was expressed in extremist slogans. Some Bengali politicians sponsored and encouraged underground organizations like the East Pakistan Liberty Party, which circulated posters and leaflets making demands ranging from autonomy to independence. Autonomy is basically the right or the condition of self-government, uh, like uh, the Pakistan would have been in place, uh, the East and the West Pakistan, but the Bengalis, they would have their separate government. The atmosphere and the system created by martial law negated the impact of some of the Ayub's measures that had benefited East Pakistan. The second reason that we come up with is the lack of national leadership. Pakistan lacked the patriotic leadership after the death of Qaeda Azam, Muhammad Ali Jinnah and Liaquat Ali Khan. The leaders of Pakistan Muslim League thought that it was only their right to rule the people. Like the country cannot uh, work without the Muslim League. Uh, so, but due to this, the ministries of Muslim League could not win the trust of the people. Even the leaders of the Muslim League could not understand the problems faced by the people of the uh, East Pakistan because they were not in constant contact with those people. So, the, in the initial years of Pakistan, it was believed that a strong Muslim League was essential for the construction of the country. And that was because, uh, obviously, pa Pakistan Muslim League, they had a... Uh, uh, fought against the Hindus too for a demand of a separate homeland. But this assertion turned out to be wrong because a progressive group of Maulana Bhashani and Atau Rahman broke away from Muslim League and they set up their own Awami League. The League became very active and enjoyed a better status in East Pakistan than Muslim League. The fall of Khwaja Nazimuddin government also, show, uh, also sowed the seeds of discord. The third reason is the poor economic condition. Before the partition of India, the Muslims of East Bengal, they generally believed that their economic hardships and miseries, they were due to the Hindu landlords and industrialists uh, who were exploiting the resources of their land. But after the partition, it was hoped that Bengali Muslims would be able to utilize their own resources, but unfortunately that did not happen. Moreover, East Pakistan could not benefit from the rapid industrialization of the country in the Ayub Khan region. So, a sense of deprivation uh, that led to the local people thinking that uh, the separation of East Pakistan is a must. The fourth reason that we come up is the negative role of Hindu teachers. After the establishment of Pakistan, the government, uh, they failed to inculcate and create the spirit of Pakistani nationalism. The West Pakistan, they had dominant share in military and bureaucracy, while the Hindus in East Pakistan, they dominated the economy and government jobs. East Pakistan's social structure was heavily dominated by non-Muslim forces that had inclination towards India. Even Hindu teachers were in majority in schools and colleges who tarnished the minds of new generation with the idea of Bengali nationalism. They prepared them to rebel against the ideology of Pakistan and it paved the way for getting separation from the West Pakistan. The next is the most crucial and important uh, reason, uh, that is the issue of Bengali language. The first landmine planted by the Hindus to shatter the national unity was the issue of the linguistic difference. Indians had organized demonstrations in support of Bengalis even during the life of Kaidi Azam, but their machinations there failed. In March 1948, Qaeda Azam, uh, he advised the Bengalis to adopt Bengali as the language of the province, but to keep Urdu as their national language. But this issue remained unresolved and thus got complicated over the years due to ineptness of our leaders. Ultimately, the central leadership accepted Bengali as a second national language, but it was too late a measure. That is in the constitution of 1956. Both ba uh, Bangla and Urdu were recognized as national languages of the country. The sixth vital difference was the provincial prejudices. 
the population of east pakistan was 56% of the total population of pakistan east pakistan was one of the uh, five units of pakistan but politicians of east pakistan demanded their representation in the national assembly according to the proportion of their population like basically pakistan was divided into five units and one unit consisted of east pakistan but the population of east pakistan that was uh, relatively larger than the whole of the uh, pakistan that was uh, their representation was 56% and that is why the ruling elites of west pakistan they were in search of a mechanism so as to neutral neutralize the uh, bengali's role in the political system of pakistan and this goal was achieved through the creation of one unit that was implemented by uh, general yahya khan in legal framework order lfo and according to this formula the 56% representation of east bengal was brought brought back to 50% at par with with the west pakistan but due to this issue the aspect of provincial autonomy remained on the back burner the seventh point is the territorial politics of the politicians So in 1954 the leadership of East Pakistan Muslim League lost elections and united front leaders who were all hungry for power they began making every possible attempt to win the support of the Hindu members of the assembly Remember in um, East Pakistan the Hindus were still uh, in uh, important positions of the uh, assembly So uh, because of this purpose the attitude towards national politics adopted by them was exactly in line with the wishes and desires of the Hindus both the groups became more energetic and more enthusiastic in their separate uh, separation the eighth reason that we have come uh, for up uh, is the conspiracies of the big powers you know the big powers they always play a vital role in resolving an issue in a country but here they were not interested in pakistan's issue india had already signed a 20 year treaty with russia and this treaty combined the interest of india indians and russians in southeast asia india got equipments as well as technical support from russia according to her wishes to launch some operations america was also involved in these conspiracies it was uh, proved because when israel supported american manufactured on uh, our ornaments to india america did not object to it but as soon as saudi arabia and yemen expressed their wish to provide pakistan with armament america stopped them to do so so basically they knew that pakistan was a very powerful country and east pakistan and west pakistan uh, together they can prove to be a very uh, big powerful unit so that is why this was the their secret conspiracy to uh, break the unit of pakistan into two pieces the next reason is the six points formula of sheikh mujibur rahman Okay so the six points formula of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman he tar proved fatal and last labor in the separation of the East Pakistan before going to uh, what is the six point formula uh, let us discuss the background that why Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was uh, obviously uh, uh, insisting on the six points formula basically Sheikh Mujibur Rahman or his followers they uh, thought that they uh, the slavery is happening in the East Pakistan the inhabitants of the east pakistan since they make up the majority of the population uh, but the exports from east pakistan which was the jute uh, that was a major export uh, income for pakistan but they were not uh, giving the proportionate share of the political power and economic benefits of the uh, country like their jute was being a major uh, export income but the uh, fruits of those income uh, were not being spent uh, on east pakistan like for instance there was a report published in the fourth five year plan that was uh, in 1970 to 75 and it stated that the population of east pakistan was much more than the west pakistan but the amount spent on uh, west pakistan that was a major chunk was spent on west pakistan and whereas the east pakistan there was a very minimum uh, chunk that was being uh, spent on east pakistan for instance if from 1965 to 1970 if we just uh, calculate that the 70% was the amount uh, that was being spent on west pakistan whereas the uh, bengalis or the east pakistanis they were only getting th- uh, approximately 30% of the spendings so this created a lot of confusion uh, in their minds that uh, since we have the uh, major population so why aren't we getting the right amount of spendings 
and they were being uh, considered as the slaves of West Pakistan because of this uh, major reason. So, uh, uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, he struck out a six points formula. But the central government of Pakistan was showing detest for that formula, for it would make the centre extremely weak and make the provinces almost independent, which was uh, basically what was uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman wanted. So it was demanded by the Awami League that a new constitution should be based on this six points formula. Uh, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his party showed extreme rigidity when asked to amend a few points. Though at times he committed that he would compromise, especially before the elections of the 1970, but after every commitment he backed down and stuck to his six points formula. The Awami League, the most popular party of the East Pakistan, was so emotional about it that all its members swore an oath to die, trying to implement the six point program. And it was due to that very formula that when not yet accepted by the central government of Pakistan, the Awami League declared the independence of Bengal. So, the next reason was the Bhutto Mujibur Rahman differences. The Bhutto Mujibur Rahman differences escalated the issue of separation. Dialogues were held to remove the differences, but all in vain. Mr. Bhutto boycotted the session of National Assembly to be held on 3rd March 1971 at Dhaka. It increased the distances between East and West Pakistan. Basically, Yahya Khan, he also wanted to become the future president, uh, president of Pakistan, so he accorded preferential treatment to certain politicians. He revived unnecessary debates over the already decided and agreed upon matters and thus made the situation even more precarious and critical. There were talks of partitioning the country in the name of provincial autonomy and provincial prejudices were deliberately stirred. And this all escalated the Bhutto Mujibur Rahman differences. Then the next reason is the success of regional parties. As we've already discussed that no big political party could win the elections in both the provinces. Awami League of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman won the elections in East Pakistan, whereas uh, the Pakistan People's Party succeeded in West Pakistan. So the National Awami Party, that is the NAP of Wali Khan and Jamiyat Ulma Islam, that was the Hazarvi group, they got successful in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan. So like no party deserved to be called the National Party basically, so that uh, the power was transferred to it. So Awami League, they had won a clear majority but could not, they could not get the power. So this resulted into the separation. Like for instance, in today's uh, world, uh, in today's Pakistan, the PTI, they, they won a clear majority over uh, Pakistan uh, Noon League. So that is how it is decided that the power should be transferred to that particular party. But that did not happen in, that, uh, in the elections of the 1970. Like for instance, uh, when there is not a clear majority, what the parties do? They start... Uh, 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 they start talking to the other parties, the regional parties for, you know, collaboration and they invite them to their own party so as to increase their majority. But this all did not happen uh, in the uh, 1970 elections. Each party, they wanted the uh, seat of uh, presidency and they wanted to rule a country. So this all resulted into the separation of Pakistan, sorry, the East Pakistan. Then the twelfth uh, reason was the military action. We've already discussed the military action that was uh, taken place in, on 23rd March 1971. Uh, why the Sheikh Mujibur Rahman he wanted uh, he hoisted the uh, Bangladesh flag, and that worsened uh, the situation. And General Muhammad uh, Ayub, uh, sorry, ya- Tikka Khan was appointed the governor of East Pakistan, and he also did not know what was the real condition of that uh, province. So General Tikka Khan was totally unaware of the true situation prevailing in that province. So the military operation failed to control the situation and instead they brought press restrictions and censorship. They, the martial law administration expelled all foreign journalists and even the local journalists also were delusioned by wrong information. The 13th and the second last reason is the hijacking of the Ganga aeroplane. India hijacked its Ganga airplane and sent it to Lahore. It put all the responsibility of this hijacking on Pakistan. Uh, afterwards, India pretending the hijacking disconnected aerial communication with Pakistan and it was nothing but a conspiracy prepared for the separation of East Pakistan. 
after the aerial communication ended the sending of the armaments to east pakistan stopped which made it impossible to launch military action on time the 14th uh, reason and the last reason is the india's military interference India had a constant wish to weaken the integrity of Pakistan for one reason or the other. She pretended the safety of her borders to invade thousands of terrorists of Mukti Bahani in East Pakistan and attacked East Pakistan. Like basically they thought uh, they were pretending that the Mukti Bahani were the terrorists but in fact they were supporting Mukti Bahani uh, in the separation of the East Pakistan. The Pakistan army had to face defeat because there was no aerial protection. Pakistani soldiers had to surrender and the country was partitioned. So this marks the end of our chapter and also the end of our syllabus of our grade 8. Uh, we have uh, supplemented worksheets uh, in accordance with each and every lecture. I'm sure you must all be doing those uh, worksheets uh, onto your notebooks. So, if you have any further questions or queries, you can of course uh, definitely ask me. Even your final term paper has also been made, so please keep in view the past five year papers and keep in view that um, while preparing for the uh, final year examination. Thank you for listening to our lecture. If you like this video, kindly hit the like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. All the videos will be uploaded on our YouTube channel for the completion of syllabus. Also, hit the bell icon for getting updates regarding the YouTube videos. If you love this video, please don't forget to share it with your family and friends. Thank you so much, Allah Hafiz.